Hola amigos, this is Level 12, and today we are going to be talking about the females of Hogan's Heroes. Now, why am I talking about the females of Hogan's Heroes? Well, one, there aren't many recurring female characters other than, like, the secretary, and even then, she's not that important, to be honest. Um... But I really like the show Hogan's Heroes, and it is definitely made for a male demographic. It's a sitcom, it's about, you know, prisoners in a German POW camp, so it's a comedy, but it's it's obviously geared towards, you know, men to watch it. And also, it's geared towards an audience of the 60s, so watching it in 2020, 60 years after it originally aired, is quite interesting, if I'm gonna be honest here, but I just wanted to talk about the women of the show because their interactions with the men are kind of interesting. Uh, so the first one I wanted to talk about is really the first female you get introduced to, which is Helga, who is played by Cynthia Lynn. She is Clink's first secretary in season one, and she- it's never disclosed why she left after season one in canon. In real life, Lynn left the show after having an affair with Bob Crane, when she, Bob Crane is a bit of a nymphomaniac. I'll leave a little, like, card here if you want to go watch about Bob Crane, but he pretty much slept with every woman on the show. Um, but in the series, she was just Clink's first secretary. Her main job was, you know, to, like, help Clink in whatever a secretary does, but her secondary job and her more important job was to help the the heroes. She would give them information in exchange for kisses from Hogan or Nylon or what have you. She would give them, like, documents. She would distract German officers for them. Her beauty and her appeal would help the heroes out. That was her basic job, pretty much. Uh, and to be quite honest with you, out of the other secretary who is the next one on this list, I liked Cynthia's- Cynthia Lynn's character a lot more. Even though they're basically the same, they're both blonde and blue-eyed. Which, by the way, actually Helga is Latvian. Her mother was from Latvia, which is kind of interesting. I just liked her portrayal of the secretary better. I don't know why, I just thought the other one was, I don't know, not interesting? The other one is Hilda. They really didn't try. <laughs> they did not try to let the audience know that this character does not matter other than that she's pretty, she's blonde, and she's German. That's all that matters. Hilda is, or Hilda is played by Sidrid Valdis. She's Kling's second sec secretary from seasons two through six. The show only had six seasons. She's the longest recurring female character, and she even married fellow actor Bob Crane on the set of Hogan's Heroes. Hilda has a little bit more depth to her in that her relationship with Hogan is explored a little bit more. She once asked Hogan, I would really like an engagement ring, and we see her kind of have a little bit of a discrepancy with helping the hero. She's like, sometimes when giving information or uh, giving them plans, she'll be like, I really shouldn't be doing this, or that she did something wrong. And Clink often goes after her a little bit more than he did Helga. Now that could just be because Hilda was there longer than Helga. But he's often trying to ask her out on dates and stuff. And she, the same as Helga, would use her looks to charm German officers to help the heroes. There's also a theory that she oh, was Nimrod, the like mastermind of the allies, but that's just a theory. Hilda also being the longest running character on the show had to amass her own wardrobe. I'll leave in a clip here of her saying that once she had to get her own wardrobe, she had a budget of like five dollars or something. And also, her lines really weren't scripted unless it was like absolutely necessary because every line she got was a line taken away from the men. She said that herself and I'll like put in the clips here if I can find them again, but I was watching um like Bob, not his home videos, but like something from the Bob Crane Foundation that she did. And also she was a really like s hard smoker, so her voice just got gravelier as the years went on, which is kind of sad to be honest. Next is Tiger, played by Arlene Martel. She's a member of the French Resistance and appeared in about four episodes during which through the progression, Hogan falls for her, and she had a really successful career before and after Hogan's Heroes, to be quite honest. 
she appears in the second episode and she appears again and again. I think the final episode she appeared in, she actually got captured by the Gestapo and Hogan and LeBeau like saved her. She never appears after that, which is kind of interesting considering like her last episode was the entrance of another reoccurring female character. She's okay. She's very smart. She's just doing her thing. I don't really remember her that much. She wasn't that much of a memorable character. And to be quite honest, I never really liked the episode she was in because it was always about the ep always about her when she was in the episodes because she appeared so like infrequently. I don't know. I didn't really I didn't mind Tiger, but she was well, she's not the strongest female character. Let me just stop that sentence right there. She was supposed to probably be the strong female lead, but that got taken by another character. Not this one. This is Frau Linkmeyer, and she is played by Kathleen Freeman and in the and in one episode by Alice Ghostly. She's the sister to General Burkhalter, and her husband is missing an action on the Russian front, which basically means death. The Russian front was not a pleasant front, and is usually pressed to marry Clink. Now the reason she's like pressed to be like remarried is one for her own security. Her brother really worries about her not having, you know, money or security or livelihood without marrying someone else just in case her husband is actually dead. And also just so she isn't living at home with their mother. She sadly is like the butt of the joke. She isn't a skinny mini. She isn't the typical pretty character when she, she's nice. I like her character a lot. She's a tad bit annoying, but... Uh, the jokes are always played up that she's ugly or whatever when, you know, it's the 60s. So, like, I give it a little bit of a pass just because this is how the 60s were, which is uh, depressing, but whatever. In a almost every episode she's in, she's, like, pressed to marry Clink, except for maybe one when her daughter was getting married and Clink thought he was marrying Linkmeyer. It's, it's a whole thing. But she falls in and out of love with Clink. Like, sometimes Clink is just the best man in the world. And other times he's the scum of the earth. It's it's very inconsistent. And I find that funny. In a very weird way, I find it funny. Finally, we get to the last and my favorite female in this show. It is Marsha, played by Nita Tebolt. She's a white Russian working on the side of the Allies. She oft and often pretends to be a lover of German officers, and she's one of the few people to be able to outmaneuver Hogan, which is very interesting. And as of recording this, she's still alive. She's 90 years old, but she's still kicking, which is pretty cool. So Marsha first appeared, I believe, in Tiger's last episode when they had to, you know, save Tiger from the Gestapo. And she was working in a bar, and she just fell in love with Hogan. Well, I don't know if fell in love is the right word. She took an interest in Hogan. Hogan was very not interested in her, but LeBeau was head over heels in love with her. And all subs subsequent episodes that she appears in, she uh, is off- she often is like, you don't know what side she's on. It's always kind of questionable, but in the end, she's always helped Hogan and his men and in finally one episode she did hook up with Hogan like that was what she wanted which is okay don't know why you want him but okay and she's just so interesting because she's chaotic I love her chaotic energy and how strong and powerful she is she very much uses her womanly charms to get what she wants and she's very she doesn't get pushed around very easily by the German officers that she's with, despite how, like, scary they probably actually are. And it's just so interesting, and I love it so much, and I love her character so much, and uh, I just want more episodes with Marsha. She's, uh, oh, she's great. So that's it for this video. These were all the f reoccurring females of Hogan's Heroes. There were definitely more. Uh, two of my other favorite ones are Axis Annie and Berlin Betty. They're basically the same job played by two different char played by two different people, but they're basically just propaganda for, you know, the the Germans that is sent over the BBC airways just to be like, "Haha, Jokes on you! Germany ain't that bad, but that's basically their job. Uh, they're b they're basically the same thing, just two different names. Like they were quite literally very similar episode plots. It, it's a whole thing. It's all very interesting. 
But, uh, yeah. Watch Hogan's Heroes. It's a good show. Anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more random fandom things. Ciao, chicos.